Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome back to our latest episode of Hello Zapigo, which, as you know, uh, we at zapigo.com have been running uh, ever since the MCO started. So this is season two and episode four of um, Hello Zapigo, uh, which means we've done 12 episodes. I can't believe that we've done 12 episodes already since the beginning of MCO. And so whatever it is now, CMCO, RMCO, whatever, we're still continuing because we can. We're all at home. Anyway, welcome uh, to everyone. Um, and hello to those who are on Zoom and hello to those who are on Facebook Live. Thank you for joining us and uh, hope you're all relaxed to uh, enjoy our offering today, which is uh, a very different, sort of different, but uh, creative uh, episode this time. So many of us used to travel. Okay, we haven't done it for a while, but we used to travel and you know how we collect stuff. We collect uh, not just photographs, brochures, tickets, all sorts of souvenirs. We might go and see a show and keep the program, whatever. And then we come back Either we dump them or we just don't know what to do with them and they collect dust somewhere. Nowadays, and I used to be one of those people, I used to collect things for I don't know what. And it wasn't until a few years ago when I, quite by chance, discovered journaling and the journaling community uh, that I found what to do with all those things, that they can be put somewhere in a journal where uh, you not only get to keep all these memories of your trips, but also it's a very nice uh, creative outlet uh, for us uh, as, a, as a new hobby. And I personally have found it very, um, very good for chilling out, for mindfulness and, and also for recalling all the fun moments uh, of my travels. Because obviously we don't put down any bad stuff. We only put down the good stuff, right? So today we have two really wonderfully creative people who have taken this um, idea of preserving our memories when we travel to the next level, totally the next level. Um, and today we are, we are, they're going to show us how they do it and um, and hopefully inspire us uh, all as well. So I would like to introduce, I'm very, very happy to introduce to you uh, my two guests today, starting with uh, Gladys Teo Simpson, who is Malaysian. She's actually originally from uh, Kuching in Sarawak but currently living in Jakarta. And she's been an artist for a long time. She graduated from the Malaysian Institute of Art and with a diploma in graphic design and then worked as a graphic designer and in advertising for a long time. And after that, because she lived abroad, um, she started painting with acrylic and oils, something I don't think I'll ever go to. I mean, painting like that and then took up um, creative writing and further her drawing skills when she came back to KL. She does, uh, how I knew uh, Gladys when I first met her, she does the most amazing dog portraits. I think only dogs, I, I can't remember whether she does cats as well, but you definitely cats. dogs and cats. And if you can see on the slide right in the middle there, they are extraordinarily realistic. And a lot of people have commissioned her to, um, I guess, memorialize their, their dogs uh, through this wonderful way. And I, I think it's, it's just great. And in 2014, she got hooked on urban sketching. If you've ever traveled around and you've seen people with their sketchbooks in hand, looking intently at something and then putting something in their 
in their book. Those are the urban sketches. And Gladys is, is one of them. And that led to her love of travel journaling, or as she calls them, her visual diaries. Um, she specializes in color pencils and watercolors. And um, now that her, her kids are all grown up, uh, and her husband's very supportive of her, of her hobby, no, more than a hobby, she has plenty of time um, to indulge in this. And, and it's really great because if you follow her on Instagram, you get to see what her life in Jakarta, where she is now like, uh, through her, her sketches. And she's now taken on quite a bit of design and illustration projects as well. She does travel journals, and here you see a travel journal that she did when she went to Barrio in Sarawak. And she's going to show us how she does it, but isn't that a wonderful way of preserving your memories in, in a very, very personal way? Uh, most of us just stick photographs. Uh, but like I said, uh, Gladys just takes it to a, another level. She's also done several exhibitions uh, in Kuching and in KL. And, and nowadays, um, since the lockdown, she's been um, doing this sort of musings. That's my column name, but this is a much more interesting way of recording musings of lockdown uh, in Jakarta, scenes from Jakarta and, and things like that. So welcome, welcome, Gladys. Oh, How are you? Hey. Yeah, you can see you. Yes, yes. Uh, I have to unpin me, I think. Well, I can't find you. <laughs> um, all right. Okay, I can't see Gladys, but I'm not sure why. I'm messing this up a bit. I think I have to unpin. Okay, I don't know how to do that. Anyway, I know you're there. <laughs> okay, tell me when I should start talking. <laughs> you can talk now. You can talk now. So, oh, okay. Gladys, welcome. Well, welcome to Hello Zafigo. It's so nice to have you on. Uh, I know you're a big fan of uh, Zafigo. You've come to Zafigo X a number yes. of times. Yes. And uh, it's so lovely to to keep in touch with you and your your work. Um, and uh, I don't know what's happening here, but okay. And uh, so tell us, uh, do tell us, like, uh, you know, one, what is it like uh, being on lockdown and, you know, over there in Jakarta? Okay, so uh, Selamat Sore, that's good afternoon from Jakarta. Yeah, and uh, thank you, uh, Datin, for having me. Hello, Zafigo, uh, to share my love of travel journaling. Well, I guess lockdown in Jakarta is probably very similar to lockdown in Malaysia, you know, so uh, we, but we, we are lucky in the sense that well, the first three months I didn't go out much, March, April, May, June. So everything was, we ordered our, our groceries via the app, you know, but we still managed to like go out for walks in the night, in the evenings. And after that, uh, I managed to also uh, walk quite a bit you know, so every day I'm like walking about two, three kilometers up and down. So that's my way of um, looking around, finding inspiration. Uh, so yeah, but before that, let's rewind. Like while I was in lockdown. So I, I was going a bit nuts, like, oh my God, what am I supposed to do? What do I sketch? But I believe you can even travel in your own house, you know? And I can't imagine people who are up, locked up in an apartment but I do have urban sketcher friends overseas who draw things from their balcony. So they just, everything, you know, even in his shower, even in the toilet. <laughs> it's crazy. It's, yeah, or, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm one of thousands of urban sketches. And, and if you're in our community, it's crazy what everyone draws different things, you know. So um, I'm lucky enough that, you know, around the house, I, I managed to, you know, document things, uh, my little antiques, uh, my plants in the garden, yeah, that, that sort of thing. So, I mean, I think you're never short of things to draw for me, 
you know, personally. And uh, I can see my neighbor's house at the back. So yeah, I draw my neighbor's house at the back, that sort of thing. But for me, I don't just draw something. I, I like to tell a story, you know? So it, it's like, my, like I said, my visual diary. So if I draw a particular, uh, like an old radio, I would say, okay, I remember buying this from a flea market in Shanghai, that sort of thing. I, I don't just draw, but I, I want to remember, you know, so it's a way of remembering where you bought things, you know, uh, where you got it, that sort of thing. Because I did not start urban sketching until 2014. And I really think back like, oh my God, all those trips that I did before, I didn't manage to sketch. <laughs> you know? Right, yeah. 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 So, so actually what I did was, uh, one of the sketches that I did recently was the one that, uh, um, what do you call it? I did a montage of my Kyoto, uh, Kyoto trip in 2012. So that was one way of uh, remembering that trip. So you can actually go back, look at your photos and right. you know, put them together and, and make it into a story. So I, I, I don't know whether Maggie has, has that uh, particular slide, but uh, let me just quickly show you. Oh, guys. that's lovely. Yeah. So I, I was looking through and reliving those moments. And I remember, you know, seeing this monk on the bridge, uh, going to the golden temple. Um, and it, it was like living through a, you know, if you guys know Hayao Miyazaki, the animator, I'm a big fan. So it, it felt like I was walking through his movie set, you know, his oh. animations. Yeah, yeah. But do you, um, like, okay, you know, your Kyoto trip was in 2012, right? Mm -hmm. Which was a while ago. Uh, do you... Do you find that you forget things or you remember things or does it not matter? It's, it's just the, the kind of spirit of what you saw there that you put down, that you yeah. draw. I, I think the take that I have out of that trip was how zen things were. <laughs> you know? ah, how, right. how, how peaceful and, and beautiful Kyoto was. You know? and, and I guess in a way, like, you know, especially now in lockdown, uh, God, I sometimes I admit I, I go a little bit cuckoo, who isn't, you know. And yeah. <laughs> when, you, when you relieve those trips and you sort of remember like, oh, okay, you know, I remember this Zen moment and I, 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 I take my breathing, that sort of thing. So yeah, it, it helps, I think, you know, just to relieve those moments and, and believe that, this craziness will pass, and right, you, right? You know, and you will be able to travel again one day. That that sort of thing, yeah. But you arrived in Jakarta just when this whole pandemic was starting, right? So yeah. you kind of have more or less been in lockdown from the moment you arrived. Is that correct? Or did no, you have a bit I, of time? I, I managed to to go around central Jakarta quite a little bit. I managed to to visit uh, Makan. Ma Machan Museum, you know, so I did, I did. So I think Feb no, November, I, I arrived November 13. So I had November, December, Jan, about two months. I had about two months. Two months, yeah. Because oh. it's, it's a bit of a pity, right, to arrive in a new country no. and then you can't really explore it uh, yeah. Yeah. as much as you, you want, you know, it's, it's, uh, but I'm sure a lot of people are in the same uh, boat. So just tell me a bit about your process when you when you sketch and, and when you make your journals. Do you sketch? I mean, I look at it and like your pictures are all over the place. So uh, do you sketch first and then watercolor or do you? I don't know. I'm not being an artist. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Um, if I were to be traveling overseas, all right. Okay. If it's locally, I would just have a sketchbook, right? I'll, I'll just bring like a little sketchbook like this, you know? Right. And, but if I were to travel, um, for as long as I know my first one, I made my own sketchbooks, you know, things like that. Wow. So I, I try to make it like, okay, if it's 
six panels, it's six days, you know, oh. right? And if it's, if I have a long trip, like maybe two weeks, I'll do a 12 panel, like, like this London one, which is like, just crazy long. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it's crazy long. So, so I, does, I, does it come like that? Or do you kind of stick I, these I, panels together? I cut it. It's from like a 20 by 30 inch paper. Ah. I, I split it down the middle and then I make it, okay, there's some measurements required, of course, and then some skill in cutting and, and you know, and uh, I make it into like a zigzag thing. And what I do is I actually take a hard cardboard and I stick it in the front. So it's like ah. a hard cover. Yeah. Right. So you've got a front and a back. So it's like a book. So end of the day, you've got this hard cover that protects it. And it helps, oh. it helps when you're sketching outdoor because then you don't need like a, a, table. a, like a, a table or something, you know. And of yeah. course, I have my uh, clips, which I don't have with me now. So I'll clip it, you know, this way. And then I can hold it and sketch. Yeah. Ah. So, so it's always a blank canvas. I, it, it's like I go in, my mind's empty. I see what I see, what I like, I sketch. So I never right. plan. I, I, I never planned. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. But where, where you sketch people, do you need to ask them? I mean, usually when you photograph people, you have to ask. Oh, no. I'm very, I'm, I'm very discreet. I'm really good at it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I suppose in the end, sketches are not to say, I suppose they're fairly generic of an idea yeah. of a person and, and yeah. not exactly that person, right? So Yeah, yeah. Well, unless... Yeah. Uh, and a lot of people ask me like, okay, it's great if the person is sitting and I can sketch the whole person, you know. Right. And, and someone asked me once, oh, what happens if you sketch his body halfway and he leaves? I said, never mind, I'll, set, I'll just sketch the next person's legs lah. <laughs> it's what, like, do you add them together? I add or... them together. You do? I, top body. So some... composite person. Yeah, sometimes I do oh. that. Yeah, no, it, it's like, it is like, okay, if I'm drawing this girl, she walks off, right? So I just draw the other girl's legs, so to say. Oh, yeah. Ah. I, I tend to do that, you know? Right. But yeah. I guess it's it's to get the the, the style and I mean, that's more important than the actual person, right? I, 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 it depends. If I am, I, if I'm like so focused on telling the story of this one person, I wouldn't right. do that. Yeah. But I would like uh if it was like in a scene, like once I was on uh where was this? This is in somewhere in London, uh in, in Portobello. And there were just lots of people. So I just wanted the feel of the place. So I wasn't, right. you know, I wasn't uh zoning in on just that one person. So I sort of mix and match people, you know. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's something. Oh. Mm. That, that's and and, cool. and I draw people candidly. I don't like them to know that I'm drawing them. Then they're right. like, sort of awkward. Right? right, right, right. Yeah. But but people are generally friendly towards you, right? When they oh, see yes. sketching yeah. and yes. yeah, they don't mind it because you know they don't mind. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and, and and you said you had people coming up and chatting. Yeah. Icebreaker. Well. Yeah. And yes. curious about what you're doing. Yes, definitely. Yeah. So, uh, well, this 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 one story where um, I was uh, actually no, let let me see. I know it's in my story here somewhere. So, yeah, Regent Canal, in 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 the UK. I I was walking towards the station, but I decided to stop by at Regent Canal. They've got all the houseboats there. If yeah. anyone, yeah, okay, houseboats there. So I'm walking there. There's hardly anyone. And I sat across on a bench. Uh, I sat across on a bench and I was looking out at this houseboat. And suddenly there's this guy in the window of the houseboat posing for me like this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and he was like gesturing, like, draw me, you know, <laughs> sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, and then I, I met this guy who's a dog walker. I drew his dog. If you uh -huh. can see, so yeah, this is the houseboat. So this is ah, the houseboat. Nice. Yeah, and so this guy, I, yeah. So this guy, he was in the window at first. Then he went up. 
So I drew him and his friend on the houseboat. Right. Yeah. And then I met a dog walker. So I, I, I sketched one of the dogs, right? So he was, he had five dogs with him and they were just running wild. And we were just chatting while I was sketching. Yeah. So there you go. <laughs> so it's a great way to make friends, right? Oh yes, definitely. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Okay, let, let me introduce uh, our other speaker, uh, Jane Lee, who is um, a, a destination wedding photographer, avid journaler, and a plant lover, which is uh, quite a diverse uh, set of uh, different passions. Uh, she's a self-taught photographer, and she started off by first taking photos of herself <laughs> and editing them, and then that went on to getting jobs in doing events, fashion catalogs, lookbooks, and then found her niche in the wedding industry, specifically as a destination wedding photographer, which to me sounds like a dream job, because then you get to travel, right? They have to bring you with them, and you get to go to nice places because nobody has weddings in horrible places, right? And, um, and from there, um, she went on to make a living out of documenting important life moments, including her own experiences. In 2015, she picked up journaling as a hobby and that eventually led her to publishing Jane's Journal India which is a book that you can actually buy and we'll, uh, I guess we'll put up the link to where you can buy it. It is a travel log featuring photographs, mementos and diary entries collected over her many trips to India. And, um, and some of Jane's work is currently being exhibited at the Laker store in Avenue K. So if you can actually get out of the house and want to see something, do go over there and you can see uh, Jane's work. So welcome, Jane. Nice to see you here. Um, tell, tell me about your, your whole career. I think we have a, a slideshow of your work so everyone can see. Can everyone see it? Uh, right. So this is uh, Jane's journal, India. That's what I'm looking at. Was there something else before then? I'm not sure. Um, yeah. So this was all the things that she uh, she does: uh, wedding shoots, uh, the da daily and travel journaling, uh, and uh, how to not kill your plants. Plant care workshop. I think I should do that because <laughs> I really am rather good at killing <laughs> killing plants. And um, and the travel journal, can we have the next slide? Yes, this is Jane's journal, India, which looks great and I want to have one as well. And it, you know, it seems to me like it's the ultimate way, you know, most of us at the most do one of those photo books thing, but this is, this is really, like I said, almost like a professional level. Is it actually printed Jane or is it, um, like like an actual book or are they facsimile copies of your journal or, or what? So it's actually like a real actual book showcasing the photos film that I took with film in India yeah. as well as uh, little stories that I went through in, in India as well as showcasing some of my journal in like directly the real journal book. Yeah, it, it looks just wonderful. And this is uh, available through Stickerific. Yeah, I'm sure all of you who are journalists will know Stickerific. And also through the Leica store, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, and they are signed, people. So do go and get it. So, um, so Jane, tell me, um, out of these three things that you do, well, look at that. Look at the very thick... Uh, oh. <laughs> uh, what do you call them? Uh, travel, travel journals. What do you call them? Travel notebooks. Um, <laughs> out of these three things that you do: photography, uh, journaling, and now plants. Which is your most? Which is the one? Which is the one that you love best? 
Oh my god, how do I answer that? <laughs> they're, all, they're all very uh very very it's like hobby but they're all very uh therapeutic. Right. Exactly. And, That's the word. Therapeutic. Yes, yes. Yeah. And all of them also requires patience. <laughs> a lot of patience, a lot of process needed. Like right. to like since little you need to like fertilize and all that. As for journaling, there's a lot of media I need to collect one by one and then stick it on, print it on. Right. But I, I can't really choose one. <laughs> right. Well, when you travel, do you collect things for your journal kind of randomly and then later on think of how you're going to place them? Or do you have something in mind already be before you do it? Okay. Uh, uh, usually they're quite random, but I will we'll collect as much material from that travel, like let's say this photo where you see on the right, this Andy Warhol, and there's a beer. Yeah. That beer. This picture is actually taken when I'm on, I think it was Anna Airline. Uh -huh. So they were serving beer. <laughs> so I, because I collect so many materials, I don't, do not want to carry with me throughout the whole trip. So I will, like um, filter whatever I need to use then I will just stick it on that book itself but as well you see there's a blank little page next to my four photos there that's yeah. where I put my content so I just like I got I got or put like maybe this I like Andy Warhol I actually visited this uh, uh, stadium in San Francisco and I collect that leaflet so I stick there uh -huh. and, and usually they're quite random. I will leave space for content. You know, I have, because I'm an amateur journaler, when I go on a trip, it's mm -hmm. always, my biggest worry is how to pack what stuff to bring. Do you, I mean, do you start off like quite minimal and then just collect stuff? Or okay. are you like uh, me, like you want to bring everything? Last time when I just started, I brought a lot of stuff with me. I brought like Fuji Instax, like the camera printer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I brought a whole chunk of pens, scissors and all that. I brought a lot of stuff. So in the end, I realized I never really use it. And it's yeah. so heavy. So the more I travel, I think because I travel so much already, I realized I wanted to... Uh, uh, carry as minimal as as the best life because I, I still need to carry my camera it's so huge yeah so yeah. usually I will just bring scissors like small scissors I won't even bring a printer anymore because I realized I come back after the trip then I'll start printing the photos so I'll bring right. the little stuff pen and scissors and glue that's it right so um like regarding your India book, what made you decide to actually print it as a book? And is it a record of one trip or many trips? Um, and, you know, yeah, why, why did you decide that it should be a book to share with everyone? Actually, this book is very special because uh, I went there 11 years ago and I wasn't even a photographer yet. Yeah, so every time I told myself, and, and also because this, this India is actually my husband brought me over. That time I'm, I'm very much a city girl. So he's the one who told me he, he been there before. So he went there the second time bringing me and it, it was my first time. So every time he, he tell me like India, India, India is a place where you hate very much, but you love as well. Every time he told me that. So being there, I went there first time. Actually India totally changed my mind. Like, like, gave me a whole different perspective, especially in photography. So I brought, I have a digital, like a small camera. So throughout that whole trip, I took a lot of photos. I'm the only one who take photos. So after that trip, um, I told myself I wanted to go back there in future. I must go back there, just not sure when. So I only went back there, fast forward, which is a few years ago, three years ago. I'm already an official photographer. So I, I told myself this time I must take a lot of photos. Then, 
funny thing is I brought my, I, instead of bringing a digital camera, I brought a film camera. Oh. So nothing is digital except the phone. So I brought this, my camera. Ah, ha, ha. <laughs> so if you realize, so this is film. So everything is in film. There's no card, no memory card. There's no screen. So each shot of film I put inside is like maybe 36 shots. So I do not know what photo I take. And mm. I come back to Malaysia, send the negative to the lab to develop. So I took like, for the first trip in India, I took 12 rows. So wow. I'm, yeah, I'm very happy. After the, the lab sent me the photo that I took, right? You know, all like, I didn't even edit, then all the photos turned out very nice. So, um, which makes me even more, more happy to see all the photos. And then eventually I put that in my journal. It's, it's even more memorable because all those photos you cannot produce anymore. Which, which is why I brought, I make it into a book. And then actually at the same time, like this one, this is the one that I went 11 years ago which I only journal it during this lockdown on April. Wow, you kept all your stuff from 11 yes. years ago. Yes. Oh. <laughs> well, actually, I already printed all these photos, I think, uh. four years ago, but I never really, like, you know how you put puzzle? You need to, like, arrange puzzle, like, what's the date that I went there? This yeah. This is India, yeah. This is India, like the food I ate, what exactly, what's the name, because I don't remember the names. Ah, uh, funny for me. <laughs> well, I only get to manage to do it during this lockdown because I'm so free, lockdown at home alone, right? So, yeah. And uh, yeah, I actually put up like puzzle, I like just stick it on. I use my timer, I think lockdown is, is the best time. But does that mean that you kept notes when you travel before? You know, yeah. with date, time, and names of things, and... Yes, I still have the receipt, the bus ticket 11 years ago. <laughs> ah, wow. Wow. I, I took a lot of photos that time, so that time, there's no Google uh, photos, but I posted on Facebook, so I went through Facebook, my album, like... The, the funny thing is, I even I don't journal 11 years ago, I have that habit to post photo in process like a like a journal like a journey so i'll write ah. there so i'll go through there like what i posted and it actually bring back all my memories wow like, wow i'm not like 100 but like highlights of that day that, that's pretty good you're so organized now <laughs> um you used to be a destination wedding photographer uh now with this lockdown and all that is that still happening because we can't travel and there aren't many weddings yeah no yeah i can't really travel even they want to book me so i i i it's a bit risky to go shoot a wedding right now <laughs> yeah yeah and besides you know where where could you go you know it, that's that's the problem yes so Great. So I'm going to start answering, uh, asking the questions that people have posted to both of you. Uh, let, let me just look through. I saw some uh, from Ivanka uh, to uh, Gladys. Um, she's asking, how long do you normally take to complete a piece? And that's probably a good question for, for Jane as well, because it all looks very... Uh, very uh, sophisticated and everything. <laughs> How long do you take to, to do one of your travel journals? And uh, for my travel journals is, um, like I said, if I have a six day trip, I would do like a six to eight panels sort of uh, uh, sketch pad. So I try and complete a panel, which is actually not, not a lot. You know, I try and complete one panel each day. So if you're talking about this one panel okay like for example i would always start at the airport so a lot of times you have so much time at the airport two three hours especially if you're flying overseas two hours one and a half before if you try if you travel within malaysia local right so um i would say i'm a fast sketcher 
So something like that, I would say 15 minutes of sketching. And then after that, I'll spend maybe half an hour putting in the color, you know. Oh. So, so I could complete like a panel like that uh, within an hour, so to say. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and again, back to what Jane was saying, I do a little bit of journaling in the sense that um, my covers, right, they are the restaurants that I've gone to eat. So I, I collect the name cards and, and all that. And even I, I also have the flight tickets, you know, to remind me. And uh, uh, this, this was actually uh, my train ticket uh, on the subway, you know, that sort of thing. So yes, I do keep bits and think of pieces like that. And um, uh, this was at the National Art Gallery, which I attended the, the event. So yeah, in, in that way, I do a little bit of journaling. Yeah. So, but then again, you have your small pieces and your big pieces. Uh, I would say I can complete something within half an hour if it's very simple. Uh, for example, there you go. Wow. <laughs> That's Jen and Marina. Oh, that, oh gosh. <laughs> oh, you got my nose. <laughs> <laughs> likeness, likeness. Try okay. that to be so prominent. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, this was like, what, 20 minutes, you know, so, so. With the colors as well. So yeah, yeah. do you, do you do an outline with a pencil first and then color in or what? No, or all at the same open, time? open. Yeah. Pen. Yeah. Oh. My, my favorite, favorite pen is a few nib pen. You know, it's the type that sort of bends up a little. It sort of curves up a little. So oh. it has, so it has different thickness from thin to thick. You can, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay, oh. here, I'm just gonna show you guys. So I don't know whether you can see, you know, so it, it, it's sort of like from thin to thick. So yeah, this is my, so this is like a gray color and this is a brown color. So and I, that's I, it. Yeah, so these two are for my outlines, right? And then of course, um, just a quick one. So you never use a process. pencil. So you're never afraid of being wrong. No. <laughs> That's I, what amateurs like me, you know, you're so scared of getting it wrong. No, initially, you need to out. initially when I started 20, 20, 2014, I tried with pencil. You know, I did, I did with pencil, but it, it's like that habit of, oh gosh, it's wrong. Erase again. Then you erase again. Mm. So then I thought, okay, never mind. Let's just go all in pen. Salah pun salah. I tak peduli already. It's you actually know? like ah. shooting with digital and film. Yeah. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. Exactly. You know, because you, you have that habit, you know, you know you can delete, you keep deleting. Yes, yes. You know, you want it to be perfect. And there's never ever anything that's perfect. So, so when you train, right. train you and actually get more confident as well. Yes, <laughs> yeah. So in the end, when I first started sketching, uh, I still remember the date, August 13, 2014. I didn't stop for a month. I sketch wow. every day. Yeah. So I ah. sketch every day. Yeah. <laughs> and and you, Jane, how long do you take to do your journals? Travel journal? Um, if it's like a long, long trip, it's gonna be very long. <laughs> but you mean you do it only when you come back? You don't do it on the go? Uh, usually I will I will stick all the layout first. Like ah. but the layout also as in leaflet, name cards. Uh, airplane ticket or anything but mm. I also need to print photos so all this will need time like let's right. it's film photos I need to send it to the lab and then wait for a few days and send the photos to me and all that that's a lot of process there are not so many labs that print photos uh, anymore as well right in KL there's only right now three mm. right now doing it yeah yeah, which is, you know, before you could just send to the local yes, yes. studio, yeah, photo studio, and they'll do it, right? Yeah. So, so here's a question for you, Jane, from Azlin Abu. When you shoot on film, do you shoot digital as well as backup? I guess I'm framing my question as an amateur that, that worry that I may end up with a bad role, or as some friends of mine have done, uh, lost the roles. Yes. <laughs> Film is very, uh, you don't know what will happen. Yeah. But I, so I, how, how do you, I mean, do I you don't, don't use digital as insurance? 
So my my only digital is my camera, which is it's so big. Yeah. Imagine carrying these two in my bag. Yeah. It's so yeah. Tired. So I want the uh is is either this, just one of these. I I don't want to uh, <laughs> or the phone. I would take the phone. Yeah, just like 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 in case, just for memory, like a note to me. So usually, right. if it's film, then it will be just film. And then if that film is ruined, then no fate lah. <laughs> yeah. So so you're kind of, I guess, more careful. It makes you more careful and and um, maybe more choosy, maybe of what yes, you take. Yes, for every shot, like I won't like just because <laughs> every now nowadays to send film to the lab is quite expensive. It's just to yeah. like, develop the film, not printing the photo yet. Right, right. So every shot is so precious, so I won't take so many shot unless. I really think that shot will make it. So right. I take that photo, like yeah. Yeah, Wait. I mean now nowadays with the camera phone, you're just going click 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 all over, and you know it just takes up space in your phone when a lot of them are not that great, right? <laughs> so yeah. So here's a question for Jane from Michelle Sanchez. Jane, do you shoot with a 35 mm lens, and do you prepare short lists? When you go on trips, or are your shots more spontaneous? Just when you see something, then you take it. Or are there? I mean, obviously, when you're going for a wedding photography, that's a different thing. But when you go on your trips, do you kind of decide, okay, there's this, there's this, there's this? Uh, no, not really. I we are very random actually. <laughs> I'm a very random person. <laughs> yeah. Well. So are we most of the time, right? Yeah, if, if, if I need to plan so many things, it's a lot of plan, you know. I, I, I wouldn't want to confuse myself with that because once I'm, I'm working at the same time and I need to plan all this, is I don't yeah. think it's very... Uh, I, I like it very uh, uh, just random and real. Yeah, yeah. Plan is that one lah. Yeah, um, there's also a question for you also, like what, what do you love taking photos of people, landscapes, architecture, and what, what is your go-to stationery every time you travel? I think, I mean, what sort of notebooks do you bring or how do you, actually, how do you keep all the, all the stuff that, for both of you, how do you keep your, the stuff that you uh, collect? Wait, okay, I usually just bring a very big, uh, this one. Like a huge Ziploc bag. Ah. So like. And just like, dump everything in. Like for this trip, this is very long. You want to see, right? Yeah, everyone have a Ziploc bag. Ziploc bag. So yeah. you see inside, there's a lot, all of my pending ticket, what, whatever. Yeah. All the things, all the junks I kept. Like this is from Sydney. I actually label it. You can't really see. So all this is from Sydney that I collected all pending to be in my journal. <laughs> Is that the same for you, Gladys? Uh, well, I think I don't collect as much stuff as uh, journalists do, so, so to say. You know, mine yeah. is just little bits and it's not much. But for me, it, it's, um, yeah, so th this is sufficient for me, you know, when I travel. And usually right. I would go with one of my sketch pads that I make and one A5 book, a small one. Same right. Up. Where do you get that A5 book from? It looks uh, really nice. Okay, this one, uh, Monologue. Monologue, you can get it in MPH, in Bangsa oh. Shopping Centre, in a, a lot of places. You can get the it Monologue sketchbook. It is specifically books. for sketching. Uh, it's, it's good yeah, enough. Some paper? It's oh. good enough, even for watercolour, surprisingly, because usually I, I, I find it a bit thin, but this one, I think it's about 120 grammage. And uh, it, it's good enough. It's good enough for for you know an A five book. Like you see, like this one, I also I, I've completed this one. Is like all done. And uh, so I brought that, this. That's not moleskin, is it? This one is moleskin. Oh. This one is moleskin. 
Yeah, so this is small skin. Oh, look at that. This was drawn from the sixth floor of the Tate Museum. And I, right. sat, I, I sat there for two hours. This was <laughs> Wow, wow. A coffee. Sh yeah. Show us your, your little paint thing. Sorry? Your little paint, your little paint box. Ah, okay. I love that. First time yeah. I saw it, I loved it. So, yep. Tiny one with the... Uh, just the necessary colors. Yep. So that's, this that's is not all... very many colors. What, how do you decide what is necessary? Uh, okay. As long as you have your mains, right? Uh, yellow, green, blue, a bit of black, maybe brown. It's enough for you to mix colors. You just have to know what colors you want to mix. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the thing is, like I said, I travel with my water brushes. So I have water brushes with me because you can't be like bringing a jar of water everywhere, right? Yeah. So, so yeah, there you go. So I've got my water brushes. If you can see water trickling down. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Right. <laughs> I think that's a, that's a great invention actually. Yeah. So, oh gosh, whoever this is did that. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. 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 So I, for me, I don't need much, you know, so, okay. so. <laughs> I don't so, have a camera that gigantic like hers. <laughs> oh, right. I, I bring very little stuff when I. Uh, yeah. Except for your camera, right? <laughs> so, and the notebook, one, one notebook and some scissors and masking tape. That's it. Oh, glue stick is very important. Yeah, actually. glue stick. Is ah, to to put yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So glue I think sticks. that 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 uh answers some of the questions, which is. What are the basic items to carry for travel journal while traveling? Mm -hmm. um, there's a question on how and any tips on how to journal consistently from Simi Lu. How how do you? I mean, is there okay? Is there a set time? I know Gladys because you are out and about. Yeah. But is, is there? Do you have a set time like morning or evening or afternoon? And for for Jane, like. Is there a set time where you sit down every day and kind of review the day and... You mean right now? Well, no. Well, when you're traveling or even now, I, I, I don't know. Uh, I won't do it because usually I'll be out all day very tired. Right. But right now, I'm... Right now, during this lockdown, I'm trying to train myself to journal every night before I sleep. Instead of staying on the phone, social media. <laughs> mm. Yeah, that's yeah, that's probably right. a more useful use of your time, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. Gladys, do you have a favorite time for when you go out uh, um, sketching? I would say for now, I've not been going out much. I've been, at the moment, I am plant crazy. Uh, Jane, there you go. <laughs> plant, plant crazy as in I'm, I'm monitoring my banana plant. So <laughs> Banana plant? Yes, I have a banana plant in the house that's growing beautifully. And and I'm just documenting the stages of it growing. So ah, through yes. sketching. Yes. Keep yeah. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So so I try and go during the morning time around 10 something 12. Uh 10 before 12. Because uh too many mosquitoes. <laughs> so I'm like quickly there, I'm doing sketching, sketching the outline quickly and I run off. Then right. Yeah, yeah, that sort of thing. So, but other than that, if I am sketching outdoors, I would say also between 10 and 12, if I go out for my walks. Yeah. Hmm. It's yes. quite hot already, you know, in Jakarta, I, especially. Oh, I, I've gotten used to the weather somehow. I wasn't that good at walking because I don't know, maybe it's because I have no car here. So my legs is my car. So I just... <laughs> Walk every day. I, I, I walk at least three kilometers a day. Back and wow. Forth. Yeah, I walk that's to the supermarket. I walk everywhere. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. That's amazing because I don't think of Jakarta as a walking city at all. But that's there you go. <laughs> a lot of back lanes, which is great. Right, right. Yeah. Okay, here's another question from Pearl um, to Jane. And this is a, you know, it's a question from me too, I would think. When you go on a long trip, how do you remember which tickets, leaflets and stuff were from which day or where? I mean, where I suppose it's on the ticket and all that, but what day? I guess they have dates okay. sometimes. If you, if you don't remember, there's a tip. 
just take, uh, let's say you collected this uh, leaflet, you use your phone, take photo, take photo, keep it in your photo album. Even if you deleted it, it okay, for me, my photos will sync to uh, Google Photos. So when you go through Google Photos, it actually show all the location and all that, like GPS. Right. That's a tip for me. If I don't like, let's say uh, I wanted to go back to this trip, which I went there three years ago, like India. So I just go to Google Photos, I type India in that year, and then I just like browse through. That's my yeah, tip. That's a great, that's a great idea, that. actually. <laughs> yeah, wow. Just take a lot um, of phone. Right. Yeah, because Pearl has the same problem as me. That we only journal when we get home, and then like, huh, oh, when was that? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, another question for Gladys, you kind of already uh, talked about this. Do you get people looking over your shoulder when you draw? And how do you deal with that? Uh, you don't mind that usually, right? I, I don't mind. And I think over the years, if you keep doing it, you get used to it. And uh, yeah. the most recent, well, I wouldn't say it's a scare. Because now with COVID, right, I try not to sketch outdoors because people get really curious and they come to you. And some of them aren't wearing masks and all that. So on Hari Raya, uh, this ah. year, this was like a couple months ago only, I was sketching outside one of the houses here near the mosque. I was sketching the mosque. 20 kids came up to me, no mask. Ayo. And I was like, okay, I'm quickly drawing. I'm not talking to anybody. <laughs> and you yeah. can't say, it's not nice to chase them away. It's the kampong oh, yeah. kids, you know? Right. So, so yeah, there you go. I mean, yeah. You get used to it. You get used to it. Right. And and that's, I, I hope, is an answer also for Kenneth Lip who says he feels awkward when drawing people in public, you know. So how do you deal with that? Yeah, I guess when you know that people are not, you know, are only curious. Yeah. Uh, and nothing more, then it's okay. Um, here's a question for both speakers. Which city inspires your art most and why? Are you, uh, you've been... You've been to several places. Uh, Jane, even in, in, in India, there are many cities in India, even. Uh, which particular city? Uh, for me, I think it's... Uh, oh, I mean, I think each country has its own charm. I can't really pick because from what I observe, okay, I mean, the, the beauty of sketching is like it slows you down. When you slow down, you're not in a rush to see seven countries in 14 days. You know, it, right? I some so many people do that. Like, my God, you know, I covered seven countries in 14 days. I think I would cover one corner in three days, you know, of sketching. I'm happy in that sense. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And and for me, I I can't pick a country, but you asked me to pick, I I I I love Hanoi. I, I love Vietnam, you know. And I, I went to Hue, I went to Da Nang, then down to Ho Chi Minh. And I think every country that I've sketched in, it, it's just awesome. I, I can't pick. It, it has its own charm from, from Barrio up in the Highlands to a city in London. You know, it, it's just two different things. I cannot pick. I won't pick. <laughs> right. I won't say that as well. <laughs> yeah, Jane. Um, you well don't have well. a favorite. Uh, where else have you been besides India? Uh, recently, not recently, last year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Last year, I've been to uh, Europe, Copenhagen, Faroe Island. Faroe Island is very nice. Oh. Uh, so if, if I were to choose, it's like a question asking me, like, which couple do you like the most? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, client is like, uh, they're all different, different yeah. personality. Uh, different process <laughs> right right <laughs> to choose but they're all yeah in, i really love india india is a lot of photo for me to take as a photographer oh yeah it, it's yeah. it's yeah it's an incredible uh place to take photos my, my husband is a photographer and ah. came back with like you know loads and loads of photos so beautiful ones it, it, it's almost difficult to uh, do a bad photo of india i think yeah <laughs> um yes Okay, next, next question is from Reka to Gladys. So Gladys, I think Reka is just intrigued that you spent two hours in one place. 
And she thinks, you know, if she did that, her husband might freak out. Where do you put your husband on this trip? Uh, okay, the London trip. I think he was, you know, I was the tag along. He was on a meeting. So, ah. so the, the best is when you tag along and you do your own thing, you know. And yes, I've had my kids roll their eyes at me so many times, you know. And I, I'll tell them, okay, you all go back to the hotel, leave me alone. You know, right. yeah. So, so, and I guess it's because I I started sketching so much later in life, and my kids are grown already. Right, right. You know, right. so they they're independent in in so many ways. So, right. so they're they're fine with mom just going off and leaving them on their own. You know, and and the husband is pretty independent, and uh, yeah. So they just leave me to it. They know that they can't peel me away from it, so they let me be. There you go. Do, has any of them taken after you, art wise? Yes, the daughter. She's doing her second year in uni, uh, animation and illustration. Oh, wonderful! <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, but she doesn't sketch though. So I've been bugging her, but coming from mom, it's useless. Yeah, um, absolutely. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, here's a question from Tersha to Jane. Do you write personal things in your journal? Because yeah. you share your journals on social media, so yeah. actually, what what do you share? The personal one you would share. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, why? Yeah. <laughs> But it just, I guess, the travel one is quite okay to share, lah. Yeah, la. that one I like to share. I I like when they actually inspire people to start their journal as well. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I yeah, share yeah. it then. Yeah. Well, you're inspiring me, so now I'm going to be a bit more organized in the way I do things. <laughs> Um, Shantini is asking, how do you store your digital photos? If it's Google Photos, your storage plan must be large. How do you back up? Huh? Oh no, actually, you can actually choose the. I think there's a format where you no need to use original photos. They will help you to shrink the size, so actually the storage is not that big. You just need to buy like the basic plan. You know, ah. like, yeah, it's it's not that much. But as oh. for and photos, I have a server for all my photos. <laughs> ah, right, right. And you're not worried because you know my my husband has backup after backup after backup because one time. <laughs> Can you imagine? Gosh. Because one time, um, something happened and he lost like one terabyte of photos, <laughs> and that was quite tragic. Ah, uh, because there were a lot of family photos as well in them, you know. So, I think he he thinks that you know the old days of uh, film is 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 better <laughs> because you don't really get this uh, as long as you keep them carefully. Of course, you don't get this sort of uh tech tech disasters, you know. Actually, that's why uh, I try to print as much as possible in my journal because people tend to forget about digital. I mean, they so depend on it; they don't even print it out, and they don't. Put yes. It. Yeah, that's the problem. Exactly. I mean, I I think that's when when I discovered journaling uh, a few years ago. I think that's that's why I realized, you know, oh, there's some use for these photos yeah. because. You know, I mean, to even organize them on your camera can be a pain, right? Yeah. And uh, now at least you choose and you print out, and you know you can look at them properly. Yeah. 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 So Tersha, who you may know is also a big journaler, yeah. uh, is asking both of you: Do you scout out or visit stationary art stores when you travel? Because she, for one, plans her trips around them, and I, I've become like that also. <laughs> yes. Hey, I research the stationery stores before I, do. I go. Yes, yeah? I go to all the art shops. I do. <laughs> uh, are yes. there things that you can't get here that that, or is it just for the for the heck of it? You know, just just there, so you enjoy them. There are things that I can't get uh in in KL back then when I was traveling. There's quite a bit of things that I couldn't get, like certain paper. You know, right? Crazy, but and I can't bring them back, especially when they're like double A three. You know. All right. So, so what do you do? So you just drool over it, lah. 
just look <laughs> and say, oh, me, I wish I could bring you home. <laughs> Dro- drooling is cheap, right? Drooling is free. <laughs> yes, and, and they're not cheap anyway. So, I mean, yeah. unless I really need it, then okay, fine, you know. And I, I like I said, so I, I'm like now specializing only in mostly watercolor and color pencils. I try not to look at other things. Mm, it's right. like, you know, and as much as I was thinking of getting pastels to try, I stopped myself. I said, okay, enough is enough. I thought, too much. I could open a stationery shop in my studio now. Oh, <laughs> I, I think all of us are like that. <laughs> and, and, here in, and here in Jakarta, you can order things via Tokopedia so easily. And it's terrible, you know. Is that like Shopee or, or yes. Lazada or something? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was I, I'm a terrible day when I discovered you could do that on Shopee. <laughs> you know? Yeah, so I, I'm guilty. I, I'm, I'm like using. I, I'm in love with this brand of ink called De Atramentis, and it's beautiful. It dries up so fast. You know, like you're on the on the go, especially when you're sketching fast, and then you can put watercolor over it like instantly. It dries up. It's so good. Oh. It's the best waterproof ink. I've I've tried. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> oh, there you go. What about you, Jane? Do uh, you scout out? Or? Well, actually, when I just got crazy into stationery and journaling, <laughs> at one point, I purposely booked a flight, fly to Taiwan just to visit stationery. <laughs> yes, ah! with, with my friends. So, two of us, I think we booked like four days, three nights. Every day we we're going every stationery <laughs> shop and we bought so many stuff back. <laughs> oh my god! I have I have to confess that I had that plan for and, this year, and if it weren't for COVID, that was that was what I was going to do. So after Taiwan, I did in Japan as well. <laughs> oh, ah, that is, yeah. Purposely yeah. went to Travelers uh, Factory Notebook. I mean the the main HQ. Wow. <laughs> Just crazy. Yeah, no, I, I totally understand. Nowadays, it's become like that, you know, forget about shoes, handbag, whatever. <laughs> Stationery. But, but now, I already, like how Gladys said, uh, she know what she want. For me, I already know what I want. I hardly buy stationaries anymore, right? Yeah. Now. Yeah. I only prioritize what I, those, and I don't waste money anymore. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. You don't just, just just collect things. Anyway, you know some things you can share with people, and because yes. you you'll never finish your washi tape anyway. Right? <laughs> no, I I oh. used to have many boxes, like shoe boxes size. I think I have like four, five boxes of washi tape. I sold out and gave out a lot. Now I left like fifteen rows only. <laughs> really? Oh, oh, I I have to learn how to do that. <laughs> um. Sue E. K. is asking both of you, what's your latest art-related impulse purchase? Especially during lockdown because, you know, suddenly we're all like very good at online shopping, right? <laughs> what, what did you indulge yourself in? Oh, uh, frankly, I, I have very good control over purchasing things because, and, and partly because the last two weeks and the next three weeks I'm I'm working on a project. So that has stopped me from browsing <laughs> Tokopedia. <laughs> so I'm telling myself I better earn some money first before I go and splurge for things that are too expensive and useless at the moment. So no, I have not bought anything besides the ink. Yeah. There you go. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> what yeah. about you, Jay? Uh it's not impulse. I bought these stickers. Oh, I've seen those. Yeah. Uh, uh, La Dois with something. <laughs> Dolce Vita, right? It's not impulse call- because it is based on a trip Faroe Island, which I'm about to journal. So I need this. <laughs> ah, okay. So you needed it. So yeah, that's a good reason. I only bought this. So. <laughs> La Dolce Vita, someone said. <laughs> See, so many people know. <laughs> oh, it's a Taiwanese. Uh, yeah. I think I think journalists spend more than sketches. I think so. <laughs> I think so. It, it just doesn't end, does it? Oh gosh. So, 
Anyway, we're coming to the end of our session. Uh, it's really been great talking to both of you. But before we end, uh, two things. One, I'm just going to ask you um, a question that we ask everyone uh, who comes on. Uh, Hello, Zafiko. And it's um, a question of if you had one piece of advice from your experience, uh, what you know, from your experience in life, what would it be to, to share with everyone? What what would be the one thing that you've learned, you know, from your experience of traveling and doing photography and journaling and sketching and everything? Who would like to go? Uh, okay. Me? Jane or Gladys? Okay. Yeah. Okay, I let, let me, uh, uh, okay. Two things though. Uh, one is travel wise and the other one is sketch wise, okay? So for me, travel-wise, uh, go off the beaten track, you know, take mm. yourself out of the comfort zone. And that's what I did traveling to Barrio for me. So it, it was a bit of a self-discovery journey. I, I don't know. It's one of those things like when you turn 50, you want to do it. So, oh yeah, go. you know my age. So anyway, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's one of those things I told myself, I'm going to do it without the family. So yeah. I, I did it, you know, I was off grid for six days, I hiked up the mountain, uh, yeah, so that, that's travel wise, you know, just, just do it, it's get, I think do things that scare you a little, that, that you know, and uh, sketch wise, uh, if you want to do it, don't ever compare yourself with other sketches, because we, I come from this urban sketching community where, my god, you look at their work, you're like telling yourself, why you know how am I gonna sketch like these guys? You know, and in the end, you, I I discovered my own style. You know, if I can't do what they are doing, okay, I'll, I'll find something that I myself can do. You know, so yeah, start small, uh, practice. You know, it's a big thing. Like I said, you know, every day if you can for for several weeks. You know, just get into the 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 flow of things, and uh, yeah. So and there's this ten. 10 tips that I have compiled, uh, that I've done, I think it's on Zavigo's website. You know, just go and have a look at that. Uh, 10 tips on sketching, which I did, I think, two years ago. Yeah. So yeah, that's it. And Jane, any uh, any advice? For life-wise will be just go for it. Like as same as Gladys, go for it. So I, I have a reason why I named myself as Jane the Crazy. crazy. On Instagram, I'm actually not crazy. Just that I'm crazy enough to do anything I want. You have, I mean, you have to believe yourself. Whatever it is, go for it. Whatever result it is, it's nothing. I mean, it's good or bad, doesn't matter. Don't compare yourself. Just go for it. As for journaling, there's so many style. Of course, you're not. If you're you're just starting out, you're not sure what is right for you. Just do every style. Whenever it is comfortable for you, then that's your style and keep continuing doing it. Don't give up. Yeah. Great. <laughs> Thank you so much. So before we end, um, can we, can everyone uh, put on the video so that we can see all of you so that we can take a group photo and, you know, have a, a record of this um, marvelous Saturday that we spent together. And I just want to thank uh, our, two, our two speakers. Thank you so much for joining us today and giving us all these wonderful tips on how to record our memories in a different way, even though I think, you know, I'm not an artist, but I guess every little bit helps, you know, um, whether it's photos or just uh, sticking things. And thank you to everyone else. Oh, who's <laughs> in pajamas? It's okay. We're just taking from the neck out. <laughs> and we are going to take now a, a photo of everyone. I don't know whether we can get everyone on one screen. Can we zoom? Or we have to do several? No. The... Okay, we'll do. Yeah, I think we have to we'll do two screens. Two okay, screens. So, uh... Okay, so yeah. everyone ready? Hello. And smile. smile. Okay. And then the next, uh, okay. next lot. Um, 
we'll we'll get you whoever um yeah switch on your 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 videos i still see a lot of names that uh, hey, without your pictures for that short like huh okay rose okay I if, if we're too shy it's all right uh okay ready smile one two Ooh, three one more. okay done is there any more is there are we missing someone no, I think or not I can. you got everyone I think I can all. okay yeah well thank you once again for joining us uh mm -hmm. this whole um this whole conversation was recorded and you if you want to listen to it again watch it again you can go to our facebook page and it'll be there and you can you know go through it all at your leisure uh uh anytime you want uh, but we'll also uh be sharing it on um, our website uh after we've done a clean it up a bit and also we'll have a, a podcast. So many different ways of revisiting today's conversation. Once again, thank you so much, Gladys and Jane, for sharing you. your, your art and your experience with us. Uh, meanwhile, everyone else, uh, we'll have the next Hello Zafigo in two weeks time. So keep an eye out on our website and uh, we'll let you know what, that, what that's going to be about. Have a great weekend. Have a great Saturday and Sunday. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.